Okay, we're back live here at the OpenStack Summit in Portland, Oregon. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. This is SiliconAngle's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, and certainly here at OpenStack, there's not a lot of noise, but a lot of signal, a lot of developers, a lot of use cases. Really, really the alpha geeks, the practitioners, really putting new technology into place to power this modern era of computing, cloud, mobile, and social. Um, David Floyer, we're here with Dimitri Stiliadis um, from Nudge Networks in Mountain View. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. David, I want to get your take on this before we set up this interview because obviously uh, we've heard from RightScale, they're on the management side just previous. We've had Rackspace on earlier. They're on the, on the, on the provider side. We had Big Switch on, software-defined networking. And now, Dimitri's company. Um, the software is eating the world. What's your take on the SDN uh, market right now, relative to OpenStack? Relative to OpenStack? Well, what you're clearly wanting to do in, in, in every part of it is separate out all of the different layers. And you want to be able to separate out the physical and the, and the logical and the, uh, the, the software is the way that that's going to be done. So instead of having to have uh, a, uh, a switch which is a piece of hardware and the software, you want to separate the two out so that you have the logical function and the physical function from, from the two pieces. So that's very important to be able to contribute to every layer, take new technologies along with you, and then define the software element of that as the piece that you keep constant as, as the technologies themselves adjust. So durable, code, Durable but yet code. manageable, you yeah. can build on and maintain. Which can take advantage of new technologies mm -hmm. as they come along. And uh, obviously, I, coming back to you, what are you contributing? What right. do you think needs to be contributing? What's the white space in that area that you're right. going after? Right, so, uh, see, when people started thinking about uh, the cloud and OpenStack and all this kind of thing, they, they quickly realize that the network is a fundamental piece, right? You have to start with the network, you have to interconnect your components and so on. Uh, the angle that we are taking is, yes, it's good within your data center, within your cloud, you have to create these network services, interconnect applications and so on, but much more importantly, you need to be able to dynamically connect these applications with your existing network services, right? So you have a large uh, amount of uh, enterprise VPN services, you have hybrid clouds coming out, so you need to be able, the moment you activate a network service in the data center, to be able to seamlessly interconnect this now with your enterprise sites, with other network services in other data centers, in other clouds, and so on, right? So the network is always a network of networks, and we have to bring everything together. We cannot just restrict ourselves with the confinements of a single administrative model. So that's, that's a fundamental part of what we are trying to, to bring here together. Okay, and so how are you fitting in with the, uh, the network layer? Right, so our view is uh, that uh, first of all, we need to talk both, w both languages. If you can't think of it as a, as a translation thing, right? So we need to understand the language of the cloud. We need to understand the language of the application developers and the cloud. They want to use some abstract mechanisms to define their network services and uh, install them if you want in the hypervisors and OpenStack Quantum seems to be the prevalent way to do that. So that's language number one. But then we have all these thousands of networks out there where their language is BGP. So what we are doing is we are marrying the two. We allow you to code and define services in OpenStack, and we allow you to define the mechanism to inter interconnect the services automatically with all the other networks that are out there. Right, so I call it sometimes, a, we're just translating between languages. <laughs> right, a, a language translator. Right. Um, from an application point of view, uh, they want to consume resources, and previously, uh, networks and uh, computers <laughs> were the, the main things they consumed. But it seems now that, uh, sorry, uh, computing and storage were the main things right. they consumed. But it now it seems that uh, networks themselves have to play a much bigger role in providing uh, a quality of service right. to those places. Right. And you've got a quality of service down in the nanoseconds uh, mm -hmm. when you get to the server level, and used to have milliseconds for the, for the storage side, it's now coming down to microseconds. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are you doing to make sure that that right. quality of service, no, it's not just the bandwidth, but it's also the latency. Right. How are you planning to manage right. that? See, the, the way data center networks evolve is, <coughs> people are quickly realizing that the same 
if you want, principles that we used in order to build the internet itself can be used inside the data center. So if you think about the internet, right? In the internet, there is voice services, there is video services, there is all these other services running, and they are actually running by assuming you have a well-engineered IP network, and then you run the services at the edges if you want all the, you push all the intelligence at the edges. It's the same thing where the network on the data center is going. The data center network becomes a very scalable IP fabric. It, it is very well managed, if you want, very well traffic engineered. And you push the edges at the hypervisors. You push essentially the, the services at the hypervisors where traffic is differentiated. So if you see, for example, a tenant misbehaving, you are going to block him at the hypervisor layer. If you're going to provide QoS or map different tenants to different classes of traffic, it's happening at the hypervisor. So the center of the network behaves like a scalable IP fabric, and all the intelligence is pushed around the edges. And the reason you want to do that is because this allows you the ultimate scalability, right? The network core doesn't need to know about every flow that goes into the, through, through the core of the network there, right? You don't need to know the IP addresses of virtual machines. You don't need to know what individual virtual machines know, need to know uh, what to do there. You just need to worry about aggregates. So you can engineer and scale the core, make it very cheap. And because you make it very cheap, you can increase the capacity at the core and you can uh, distribute all the intelligence at the edges of the network. Right, but so you, you said that you can do to the hypervisor, and that's yes. obviously on the compute side, uh, that yes. side of it. But what about the uh, data network? Um, right. Isn't that a, e don't you need to regulate uh, the uh, priorities and flow right, from right. the data through? And isn't that today, that's, uh, mm. that's a very big part of it, isn't it? Y yes, but it, it is still happening at the hypervisor, right? The, the first touch of it, and if an application with a network is not anymore the top of rack suites, let's say on the data center, but it, has, it is actually the hypervisor virtual suites, right? That's the first time that you see a packet. When a packet comes out of a virtual machine, the first time you see it is at the hypervisor itself. And at this layer, when the first time you see the packet at the hypervisor itself is where you apply all your policies, right? In other words, the edge of the network is not the hardware, it's not the switch on the top of the rack. The edge of the network is inside the server now. Okay, yeah, Okay. excellent. So I want to ask you, we have a couple minutes left here. I want to, we have two minutes left. I want to get your perspective on the state of the business mm -hmm. um, around OpenStack. What is your view, okay, because you're chief architect, so you're looking at the tech. Yes. And you have, but you have to intersect the business objectives. Right. Um, what are you seeing as the core business drivers that are, that are causing you to make your technology a certain way? Right. So, it's clear that what people want to do is they, uh, they want to provide this uh, ability to their end users to consume services rapidly, right? That is what is driving this whole open stack development. Uh, and more important, the community came together in order to unify if you want the, the core engine and the core APIs in order to make this consumption of services very easy. And in order to allow the application developers to move from one cloud to the other and so on, right? What we do is, what we try to do is, in addition, is expand if you want this model and making the network as consumable as the storage and compute facilities, right? And I'm not talking just about the network in the data center. I'm talking about also the network in the way that the service in the data center of a cloud provider will interconnect with the enterprise, right? If you see the, the next, if you want, holy grail that everybody's talking about is the hybrid cloud. The hybrid cloud is only possible if you can connect the network and the services in the service provider cloud with the network and services in the, in the, in the enterprise itself, right? So the, what links the two together is the network. So we have to make this network to be consumable. Final question for you is, obviously DevOps is a mindset. We heard from RightScale that that adoption is uh, in right. mainstream enterprises and service providers, but the word infrastructure as code is becoming uh, more popular outside of the, the geeks and the, uh, um, the architects, the coders. What, in your mind, how would you describe infrastructure as code to the folks out there? Uh. <laughs> Give it's it a, a try, it's okay. <laughs> no right answers. <laughs> it's a moving target, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Reality is it's that the applications and code is a living organization. It's constantly changing and you cannot assume at any point it's static, right? It's not, the, it's not the good old days if you want and that's what it really means, right? It's a living organism. It, it will constantly adapt to the new, to the new requirements out there. 
like switches in the old days, you knew exactly ports and you, you exactly. knew what was going now, it's all kinds of weird stuff happening, right? right. It's all stuff, you, you have to be, you, you have to accept change if you want, right? So <laughs> it's the, it actually there is a, there is an old uh, Isaac Asimov quote, right? The, you know, the, <laughs> uh, the author of the science fiction stuff yes. that said, yep. the only constant is change. Yeah. <laughs> we should do That's a genome project <laughs> just on the, the network genome. Here, software-defined networking, uh, Dimitri Stilianos, uh, thanks for jumping inside the cube again. Uh, you're here like, with a lot of other chief architects making things happen. Uh, congratulations, thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back with Good more luck. analysis from David thanks. Floyer after the short break. Going to break down day one and uh, day two here uh, in more depth from the analysts here at OpenStack. This is SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit. We'll be right back. <laughs>